Hi humans, Walter Jackson here from the Five Jackson's Journey. Today I wanted to cook a traditional South African oxtail. And uh, usually we make this in a big black pot um, over a fire that takes four or five hours. But I'm going to do a cheat today because it's uh, so cold outside. I'm going to make it in a uh, ninja foodie. I want to show you all the ingredients and I'll go through them one by one. But this is a simplified version of how we make puikikos uh, outside. And you can do it inside if you have a pressure cooker, a slow cooker, even just if you have one big pot. Okay, so let's quickly go through the ingredients that you need for the oxtail uh, poiki. Uh, for the sauce, I'm going to use some red wine, tomato sauce. Um, you can also use tomato paste or even chopped tomatoes. We've got some cream, beef stock. I've, I'm using two herbs, uh, cilantro and rosemary, or what we call coriander leaves in South Africa. Then I've prepped uh, some uh, white onion. We've got some shallots here freshly chopped and some roughly chopped uh, garlic. Then for the spices, and they don't all need to be in different kind of containers or shakers like this, but I'm using ginger, nutmeg, uh, cinnamon, cumin, turmeric, and black pepper with obviously salt. Then we've got the oxtail. Um, this is kind of the standard package that you get in the US. You'll have a, a couple of big ones and then a few smaller ones. And I'm going to use two of these packs. And then for the vegetables, uh, we're using some brown baby bella mushrooms. And then I've got a, a pumpkin here, which is acorn squash. But you can use butternut. You can use South African pumpkin. I'm going to put in some carrots and potatoes. And then lastly, I've washed uh, some Brussels sprouts and they're just drying. Uh, I'm going to cook these a bit different at the end and I'll show you where the difference is uh, in terms of how I cook the vegetables at the end as opposed to a traditional uh, poiki course and then lastly kind of the secret ingredient we all South Africans love it's uh, Mrs. Ball's chutney now if you don't have this you can use any kind of other chutney or even an achar or kind of any relish or fruit substance that you can add some sweetness to the dish the last ingredient is bacon. I have crisped up this bacon. I do that so that when I put the oxtail in here, you still have all that aroma of the bacon inside the pot. First thing we do is we put all the oxtail in the pot where I'm gonna make the sauce. Uh, so I've put only one of the packs in. I want it to uh, really brown off and caramelize sear the outside before I put it into the slow cooker and I'm going to do that for both packs. Now in the pot, uh, the Ninja Foodie pot, this is where I crisped up the bacon. At the bottom you can see all of that kind of nice uh, uh, bacon fat drippings. I'm going to throw off the oil but I'm going to leave all of that nice beautiful flavor in there uh, when I put in the oxtail. So in here uh, all I've done now is I've uh, thrown out all of the oil uh, after I cooked the bacon and I've added enough water just to cover the base of the pot so it just kind of barely touches on this uh, kind of fitting that you put in to uh, crisp or to uh, slow cook. I think it's nearly ready. You can start to turn it. You can see that there's some beautiful color on this and uh, just turn all of them individually like this. And um, when they're done on both sides, I'm gonna kind of flip them over and do the sides as well. But uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta really get a nice brown on them. This step is very important. So make sure when you brown it, there's a really nice dark brown color on it. Do it on all sides, keep turning it, making sure that uh, you see all that fat out because it's going to make a big difference to the taste at the end. Now the pot is full to the brim with beautiful oxtail and uh, it's ready to go in um, for about an hour and a half on the pressure cooker. Okay, so we get the lid on and then we're going to put it on pressure cook and we're going to set the time for an hour and a half and all you need to do now is 
press go. So I want to pressure cook this. It's got a beautiful sear on. It's got all that really nice marbleization on the outside of the meat. But we want to get it completely tender now. And I do this with the meat completely separate of any of the vegetables because uh, I want the meat to be tender before I do anything else. And I'll show you what I do with the vegetables in the end. So uh, you'll understand which vegetables I want to have soft and which ones I want to have crispy. So now it's going to build up steam for a few minutes and then it's going to start and an hour and a half is more than enough time for me to start with the sauce which i make separate and also to have a few glasses of the wine that was left over you'll see here in the pot when i was done uh, just searing the oxtail uh, you look, see all that fat that's cooked out um the oil that's left we're going to get rid of that but we're going to leave that beautiful little bits and some of the burn parts because that's going to form the basis of our sauce so into this all of the onion shallots and garlic okay so the onions have softened now they've been in about seven minutes on the medium heat they're nice and soft and it's time to add the red wine so you put in a generous amount at least uh half a bottle to three uh, quarters of a bottle that's all that was left in there and uh, how I make uh, or how I use wine in any kind of stew or sauce I never throw it in near the end what I want to do is I want it to cook away into the onion so most of the moisture is gone because otherwise I feel it makes the stew too acidic and then you have to add too much sugar to balance it out so this way, you cook away all of the liquid slowly. I'm going to maybe increase it to 7 out of 10, just for a few minutes, just to get that bubbly, and then I'll put it back down to 5. And all we're doing now is waiting for that liquid to completely reduce all the wine to cook away into the onions. And then we're going to add the stock and start to make this beautiful beef stew sauce. Now you can see most of the liquid is cooked out and uh, I'm gonna let it saute for another minute or so just to make sure and then I'm gonna add the beef stock so now into the pot goes all of the beef stock I want the sauce to reduce by quite a bit so I'm gonna put all of it in I'm using unsalted uh, beef stock because I want to be in control of how much salt goes into the dish every little drop counts and it stays on that medium heat for another I don't know hour or so and I start adding the spices so I use uh, about a teaspoon of turmeric teaspoon of cumin and uh, nutmeg a teaspoon ginger about two teaspoons and about two teaspoons to three teaspoons of cinnamon now in goes the rosemary I'm putting in the whole sprig I love the flavor that it adds to the beef and the stew but I want to be able to remove this because um, I don't want to chew on it I'm about an hour in the stew is still just puttering along and I'm going to start to add some stuff. First goes in about three tablespoons of tomato sauce. So we've got about a half an hour left on this uh, pressure cooker for the oxtail. And that's when you want to start adding the potatoes and carrots into your uh, sauce. I've got my potatoes here. I've cut them just in half. It, uh, I feel that it kind of helps the kind of sauce cook into the potatoes better when they cut into halves. I'm gonna add them uh, into my pot and we're still going at about medium heat. In go the carrots, about half a bag. Beautiful. That should be enough. It's been half an hour, potatoes and carrots are soft. 
and now in goes the bacon I don't put it in earlier because um, I don't want it to soften up too much and uh, we're only gonna let them simmer for about a minute and then I'll show you what we do with the actual oxtail because that's ready it's been half an hour and a half this is what it looks like after an hour and a half it is so soft there's nothing no resistance completely soft perfect now I've put it in the sink what I want to do now is let it drain that's why I don't cook it in the actual um, pot I put it into this little uh, attachment that goes in I want all of the moisture to drain out of this because I'm gonna um, air fry it for another 15 minutes and this is what's left in the pot now this is absolute liquid gold I want to uh, throw this into the sauce but what you can't do is throw it in directly because if you can see at the edge there's a big fat oily layer laying on top so i got to get rid of that first so I've scooped most of the oil out I've let it rest so it separates and then I scoop the top off of oil but I'm still getting rid of that last little bit of oil because I don't like that oil taste in my boiki but what I want to do is just that little uh, pieces of fat I see here and there I still want to cook that out with a lot of heat and that's why the air fryer is perfect so I'm gonna close it I'm gonna put it on uh, air fry and I'm gonna do another 15 minutes yes another 15 minutes it's worth it and it's gonna look absolutely beautiful when I take it out oh my god everything in here is crispy softness now and what I'm gonna do now is transfer all of this delicious meaty goodness into this pot where the sauce has been brewing and remember there's no fat or oiliness in this sauce nothing and all of the fat and oiliness from the oxtail has dripped down into the tray and I got rid of it all of them oxtails into the big pot now and all that meaty goodness is going to cook for another 15 minutes and I'm going to show you why 15 minutes in a second so the 15 minutes this is all going to cook slowly I'm going to add the mushrooms on top because I like my mushrooms whole and not overcooked plus when I leave them whole like this gives the kids a fighting challenge to pick them out and put them in my plate now my uh, ninja foodie is empty I'm gonna add all the pumpkin that I cut earlier and I'm cooking it completely differently I'm gonna put a bit of oil on top just a slight bit of oil and some salt because I want this crispy and crunchy and that's going to add a different element to the dish so the mushrooms have been in for uh, 10 minutes now you want to add that um, Mrs. Balls and you are going to add two tablespoons of Mrs. Balls we're going to cook that for five minutes and then we're going to add the cream and then the sauce it's done and then we only need to adjust the salt level 10 minutes later we add a little bit of cream so the pumpkin is nice and crispy crunchy and now I'm gonna take it out and add the last element which is the Brussels sprouts now a lot of people don't love or even like Brussels sprouts many despise it but it's because it's got a really bitter taste but if you cook it like this, olive oil with an air fryer, and uh, this is about three or four minutes away from done. When it gets that crispiness, olive oil, salt, pepper, that's all you need, it's bloody delicious. Brussels sprouts are charred to perfection, so it's ready to plate. So we're ready to plate, and when I 
say plate, I mean paper plate. Wild rice cooked earlier, and now we're gonna add the poiki. Last ingredient is the coriander or cilantro. And you have a perfectly cooked uh, oxtail stew, but the pumpkin and the Brussels sprouts are crispy, they're not soggy, and not everything on the plate tastes the same. Crunchy elements, soft elements, and it's beautiful.